Hey guys, it's Conf College Studios here, and yes, I'm finally addressing this whole situation. As of the recording of this video right now, it is Thursday, August 18th, exactly one week after Six Flags had its quarterly earnings call, which was certainly interesting. Now, I know a lot of people have been asking me what's taking me so long, why I haven't mentioned anything of this, and of course the day of the call I got a lot of comments on the video I posted that day, which was not relating to the call, but there was a lot of discussion about it. We were going to have an opportunity to speak directly with Salim, but it's looking like that may not happen, so I just wanted to get this video out there, get my thoughts out there instead of waiting and waiting and waiting. So here you go. If you're not familiar with this entire situation and what's going on, let me just fill you in. Basically, Six Flags got a brand new CEO named Salim Bezol back in November of last year. He joined the company and immediately started talking about the radical changes he wanted to make. He wanted to transform Six Flags from the lower tier, cheaper theme park experience to something higher level, almost on the level of Disney and Universal. Now, obviously, that sounds pretty insane. But originally, a lot of what Salim wanted to do with the parks sounded pretty appealing to us coaster enthusiasts. He wanted the parks to be less crowded, which of course would decrease attendance, and he would accomplish this by raising prices so that people would not be able to get into the park as cheaply, there wouldn't be as many freebies, the whole season pass system would change, that way the parks would be less crowded, but in theory, he would want more people to spend more money at the parks which in turn would create a better park experience. So, in the beginning of 2022, the pass system was completely changed. The memberships of the pass were completely gone, along with the season passes that were a little lower tier than the memberships. This began the new season pass system, which included three different passes. I've already gone over these passes in a prior video, but basically they were a lot more expensive and you did not get as much value as you did with the memberships. Thankfully, memberships weren't all just canceled. You could keep your memberships with the same perks as long as you kept paying monthly, so all was good. Season started, and pretty much every park had some sort of internal park improvement, and of course, other parks like Fiesta Texas and Magic Mountain had new rides on the way. Great Adventure, as I'm sure many of you know, we got Medusa being rethemed from Bizarro to Medusa. A lot of park improvements like the new entrance, the Summer Vibes Festival, along with many other new things. This was all a part of Salim's plan to make the parks higher quality, more premium experiences, and the pricing of the tickets definitely reflected that. There was a huge jump in ticket prices. Currently, I see ticket prices as high as $100 per day in peak days of Fright Fest, which is pretty insane. And when you go to these parks, any of the Six Flags parks, Personally, this year I've gone to Six Flags Great Adventure and Six Flags Over Georgia, and let me just be clear, I've had a blast at both parks. They're both great, really, really fun parks. However, they are very, very empty. There's barely any crowds at the parks, especially Six Flags Great Adventure, which during the summer would always be packed. You'd be waiting quite a bit for rides, but that's not the case this year. You can walk on and really just have a great time. However, this really is not that good for the company long term, as we were able to see in the second quarter 2022 results that were announced on the call. So, all of these figures are being compared to the equivalent from the previous year. So, just for example, right here in this picture, you can see that this is from the Six Flags website. It's comparing July 3rd, 2022 to July 4th, 2021. So, two different years, and keep in mind that 2021 at this time COVID was definitely still hitting the parks in terms of attendance and capacity limits. There were some parks like the California parks and Six Flags New England that were still kind of getting back from being closed. So they weren't really fully at capacity quite yet. However, they were close enough. And the change in revenue, attendance, etc. is pretty drastic. Revenue dropped 5% from 2021 to 2022. And attendance dropped 22% from 2021 to 2022. Attendance went from eight and a half million to 6.7 million. That's a pretty big drop, especially considering that this year should be the year that everyone wants to get back to the parks, now that the pandemic has calmed down substantially, and that's just not the case. Now, the only really good things that have come is that the admissions spending per capita is up 27%. 
So that means that people are spending more money in the parks. Same can be seen with in-park spending per capita, up 18%. So this is good, but when you look at the revenue loss and the attendance loss, how are they going to make this up? What are they going to do? Well, Salim has said numerous times that this is more of a transitional year for the company, that this year is going to look a little rough compared to other years, but once they make all of their changes happen, that the parks will be better and attendance and revenue and all these figures will be better. Well, his plans to make this happen are interesting. Salim believes that there are enough rides in all of the parks that they don't need to add new rides in order to bring in new attendants. They want to cater more towards families and bring in different kinds of food and festivals and stuff like that. Well, the problem is that the parks are already chock full of thrill rides. At least most of them are. I'd say a good 90% of Six Flags parks are geared more towards thrill seekers. So in order to make this sudden change towards families, you're going to need to change the park to be more catered to families, which would of course include rides for families, which most Six Flags parks, if I'm being quite honest, really does not have. When you look at Six Flags Great Adventure, for example, there's only a handful of family coasters. You have Skull Mountain, Runaway Train, Dark Knight, and then the Kitty Coasters, and that's about it. The rest of the rides are, or at least roller coasters, are thrill rides. So in order to gear more towards families, you're going to have to make new investments to change the parks to gear more towards that audience. When the audience is already geared towards a certain demographic, which is thrill seekers, you really need to spend the money to make that change, which Salim doesn't really want to do, which is just kind of an issue. It's not going to wind up working out in the long term because if you want to get different kinds of people inside the parks, being families, you got to spend the money to get them in. And you're going to need to do more than just festivals and food. That can only go so far. That also brings us into the pricing of the parks, which is very high. You can't expect people to be willing to pay a premium for Six Flags when the premium product isn't there yet. I think what they should have done from the get-go is slowly migrated to this new payment system where it's much higher to get into the park, much more expensive. Suddenly changing the passes completely before the parks open for the season so that they would be much more expensive without the new stuff being there to make that expense worth it really does not work out in the long run and that reflects heavily in the second quarter results. Over the course of a couple months, you can't expect Six Flags and its reputation to go from being what it is, which is a relatively affordable way to go have fun with either your friends or family or whatever, to something like Disney or Dollywood or Universal. It just doesn't work like that. You need to have it go over a period of time. Honestly, I think they should have gone more for like a five-year plan sort of thing, where slowly they'd adapt the chain into being a more premium product as opposed to what it is now, which I'm not saying it's bad right now, it's just not on the level of what they're trying to price it towards, which is stuff like Dollywood, Silver Dollar City, and of course the more well-known stuff like Disney and Universal. Now, there's been a lot of stuff going on, more so behind the scenes, that was slightly alluded to during the call. There's been a pretty big cut in full-time staff. We have also continued to optimize our full-time and seasonal labor in the parks. As a result, we have reduced our full-time headcount by almost 25% since the beginning of the year. And one of the more notable things, as can be seen on his LinkedIn page, Park President of Six Flags Great Adventure and a great friend of ours, John Winkler, is retiring from the company. Now, whether he's actually retiring or that was a part of these full-time cuts, it hasn't really been released to the public. But I know he's definitely had pretty big plans for Six Flags Great Adventure, and to see him go without seeing these plans come to fruition is kind of surprising, so I'm just going to put that out there. And it's also been seen that on her Facebook page, Kristen Fitzgerald, who is a big person for PR Great Adventure, has also left the company. So there's definitely something up in terms of employees at the Six Flags parks. Again, I'm not really going to go too much into that as that's not really my territory, but that's definitely something to be mentioned. I know there's been a lot of talk as well about 
great adventure specifically and what their next coaster will be what their 2024 edition will be and unfortunately i think that any rumors or any maybe even confirmations that you guys may have heard about what great adventure is doing in 2024 is probably done because of salim's vision for the parks he doesn't want big coasters like that at the parks he doesn't want to put crazy investments into these parks what he said is what he's probably going to do he wants to more cater towards families he wants to put in stuff that is not rides more or less which in my opinion is definitely not the way to go now if i were salim and i was the board of directors of six flags and i had to pick a direction for the company to go personally i would try to go more for a cedar fair approach to things cedar fair is not the cheapest it's you know it, it's still relatively expensive it's not cheap it's not overly expensive it's pretty much the happy medium most people can afford it and you get really really great quality of rides at their parks of course some of their smaller parks maybe not as much as some of their bigger parks but they still have some really really good attractions and they keep adding attractions you look at a park like king's island they got a Giga Coaster, Orion, they have a GCI Wooden Coaster, Mystic Timbers, along with a lot of other attractions. In Cedar Fair, while they do have their problems of neglecting some of their smaller parks, with their bigger parks, they make sure that they constantly get new investment to invigorate new crowds to come to the park to come check out that new investment. If there's nothing new at the parks, there's no reason for people to return to the park if they've already experienced it especially if they didn't have that great of a time. And I'm not saying that guests are not having a good time. I'm just saying that if there's no good reason to go back, especially with these high prices at Six Flags now, there really is no reason to go back, which is why there needs to be new investment at these parks. You need to have big rides. You need to have big festivals, big food. Look at the way SeaWorld does it. They just opened a whole slew of coasters across all their parks. Just look at Busch Gardens Tampa, for example. They've just opened Iron Gwazi, and they have festivals all throughout the year. Same with Busch Gardens Williamsburg. They just opened Pantheon, and they have festivals all throughout the year. You need to do more than just the ride. You need to make sure you cater to everyone, and you can't cater to everyone by alienating your thrill seekers. You still need to add new rides, and if you're going to do that, you also can't alienate the families. You need to in introduce new family attractions. So there's a really, really specific happy medium you need to get to if that's your goal for the company, to get it to a point where you can cater to families, but you can't just let go of the thrill seekers since majority of the rides at your park are for thrill seekers. Relating to this, at one point in the call, Salim makes mention of rides that have opened this year and are opening in the future. Take a listen. We will introduce, we will be introducing record-breaking and first-of-its-kind ride this year. At Magic Mountain, Wonder Woman Flight of Courage, single rail coaster, the park's 20th coaster. At Fiesta, Texas, Dr. Diabol Diabolical Cliffhanger, the world's steepest dive coaster. Over Texas in Dallas, Aquaman, Power Wave, the first of its kind water coaster in North America and parks 14, 15th coaster in that park. In St. Louis, Cat Woman Whip is going there. In Discovery Kingdom, Side Wind, Wind, Winter Safari, a unique combination family coaster and animal exhibit. And then in Daniel Lake, we are rebranding the water park and making it up to standard of Hurricane Harbor. I think if you look at what we're introducing still this year, I think we've introduced, I think, a lot of rides even though this has not been our priority going forward, at least for the next two years. So all these rides that he listed, Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger, Wonder Woman, Aquaman Power Wave, which was supposed to open in 2020 and now is opening next year. None of these were decisions that were made by Salim and his leadership team. This was all before him, whether it was Jim Reed Anderson, Mike Spanos, John Duffy, we don't really know, but it definitely was not Salim. He didn't decide on these rides when he had just taken the helm in November of 2021. So none of this reflects the direction he's taking the company. All these rides, they were already planned. They were probably too far along to get canceled, so they just let him go through. Projects that are currently in the works or were currently in the works probably may have gotten canceled depending on the direction he's looking to go they probably were not far enough 
to have lost money if they canceled it, so they figured they'd just cancel it before they would lose money on it if they were to cancel it later, if that makes sense. So all these new rides, this doesn't reflect what the company is going to be doing. This is just stuff that's carrying over from previous leadership. Honestly, it's kind of looking like to me that this era of Six Flags with Salim, they don't want to build new rides, new coasters, which honestly is not going to work out in the long run. And if they're going to continue thinking that it will, then they're going to see it, especially in their next quarterly earnings call and the next one and the next one. So to kind of wrap things up, I think it's pretty obvious. I'm trying to take a middle ground approach here. I don't want to be too negative. I also want to be too positive. I want to try to look at both the negatives and the positives and come to something in the middle. Now, I do think that Six Flags really needs to figure out what their direction is going to be. More specifically, Salim should probably reevaluate the plan for the Six Flags parks. He has said that he does not see a return to the Six Flags of the past which honestly, I don't know if that's really the best thing to say. This is obviously not working, whether that's because it's not working yet and it will work eventually, or it's just not going to work at all. I think something definitely needs to be done. I think that the current strategy just is not going to work in the long run, whether that means that prices need to drop, the dining plan needs to return, which he did mention that it will return. I do think that there are some things that need to be done in order to bring back Six Flags from the state it's at right now, which is a state of very low attendance, less revenue than it should be, and the parks really should be thriving right now. They should have high attendance, high revenue, and I know his goal is to drop attendance, but dropping attendance that much and then changing your prices, how are you going to get that attendance back? I think that's what they should be focused on right now, getting back the attendance and the revenue that they lost in order to find this new vision for Six Flags and keep it sustainable. But that's it for my thoughts. I will be having a public thoughts video coming very soon where you guys will be able to share what you guys think Six Flags is doing, where you think they're going, etc. But that's pretty much it. I might do another video if I get some questions in the comment section. So if you do have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I will try to answer them either in the comment section or if I get enough, I'll do another video on this because there really is just so much to unpack and I don't want to make these videos crazy long. This one's long enough, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye, guys.